So, here we go then. Right, you're ready, you're ready to rumble. If you're cooking it with me, that's great, but I will take uh, my time as well. All right, so cooking it with me, number one, turn the oven on. All right, because that is really important because otherwise they will take longer than the 12 minutes they should take. It's 180 degrees is the oven temperature. All right, 180 degrees. All right, so turn the oven on, 180 degrees. If you have um, degrees, I think it's gas, but I always forget. I've got a little oven chart. I always forget myself. Oven chart over it. 160 is gas mark three, apparently. I said 180. Gas mark four, there we go. So if you're gas, gas mark four. All right, so gas four or 180. Right, stick it on now. What you now need, or will need, are some baking trays. It depends, you might have a real posh baking tray that doesn't stick, well that's great. Um, these are, you've seen probably before, old, um, and need some baking paper. All right, so I've got, and actually this makes, should make 12 standard size cookies. So you probably will need two baking sheets. All right, just pre-warn you of that, okay? So I'm, I'm just really slow, as slow as I can. First of all, all right, what's going to take you the longest is to melt the butter. All right, so 115 grams of butter is melted. Just melted, so do it in a saucepan or do it in the microwave, but you need that melted. All right, so it's 115, 115. So get that melted. That then goes in, the, in a bowl, all right, like that. All right, we okay? We're then going to put in our sugars. All right, so we have two lots of sugar. Turn it on. So the white granulated sugar, and I'll say the don't. I'll say the recipes obviously in a in a bit. So the oven on was gas mark for 180 degrees. Get the oven on. Make sure your baking trays are ready. White sugar, granulated sugar is 100 grams. You melt the butter until it's melted, okay? So literally don't burn it, you just want it just melted until it's in its liquid form. All right, don't do it any more than that, otherwise it will burn and it will kind of taste burn. All right, so just till it's liquid. You want then 100 grams of sugar, white sugar. And then behind me, you then need 165 grams of the brown sugar. All right, so conscious of the um, amount. All right, so the butter is 115 grams. The granulated sugar is 100 grams. And now the brown sugar, now to be honest, I've got soft brown sugar or light brown sugar. You can use dark, you can use uh, like the dark, you know, all the different sorts of the uh, granulated sort, it doesn't actually matter, but brown sugar would give it a nice uh, caramelly um, flavor. So to recap, Kingman family, in my bowl, I've got 115 grams, 115 grams of butter, which has been melted. I've then added 100 grams of the white sugar. I'm now gonna add 165 grams of uh, the brown sugar, all right? So 165 of brown. And then I'm just going to add a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to guess that as a big pinch. All right, I've got some sea salt because I'm posh like that. All right, so a decent teaspoon of salt. It seems surprising in a sweet cookie, but actually sugar can bring out um, the sweetness as well. All right, so in my bowl, I've got 115 grams of melted butter, 100 grams of white sugar, 165 grams of brown sugar, and a teaspoon of salt or a decent pinch of salt, whatever works for you. Okay, what we then do, hopefully fairly logically, is we mix it together. I'm gonna to find myself a slightly better whisk. I'll just find a better whisk. Just mix those together, okay? Not major, we mix. Is that one all right? Here 
He won't mix particularly well, all right, just because um, he's not like you're creaming it, you're just mixing it because obviously the it's melted butter rather than just soft butter, if that makes sense. Okay, what you're now gonna do is you're gonna add one egg, one egg. And a teaspoon of vanilla extract. It's just matter, it doesn't really matter, but extract is better than essence. Essence is made in a chemical factory and has never seen a vanilla pod in its life. Vanilla extract, which is more expensive, um, has seen vanilla. All right, actually would have some, some real vanilla um, in there, okay? So you want a teaspoon of that. I'm gonna guess a teaspoon, because that's how I, ro I roll. Then we're gonna mix that together. All right, so I will recap it in one second. So we have 150 grams of melted butter, 100 grams of white sugar, 165 grams of the brown sugar. I've mixed that together. I'll then put in one egg. I then put in a teaspoon of vanilla, okay? And what it will look like, give it a, give it a bit of a decent mix. Oops, I've escaped. Don't want that. Okay, it'll be quite wet, because obviously we haven't added. All right. Is everyone okay? Any issues or problems at the time here? Wait one second. Okay. So, we're going to carry on. What we're now going to do is add, I will measure this, because if you add too much bicarb, it can um, taste a little bit uh, chemically, if that's a word. Half a teaspoon, if you haven't got a half a teaspoon measure, don't worry, just do half a teaspoon. All right, so you've got to use common sense and use half a teaspoon. So one half teaspoon, this is a half teaspoon measure. All right, half a teaspoon of the uh, bicarb of soda. That's it, and that's what will actually give it a little bit of aeration, a little bit of lift. So they go puffy when you cook them. Yes, in one second I will. And then we're gonna add in our plain flour, which is 155 grams, right? So 155 grams. Give me one second to weigh this and I will go through the uh, ingredients again. So 155. So I'll get rid of all this now, I've used it off. And I can get rid of my scale, as I won't need that anymore either. Yes. Then we're gonna mix. Now, one, I'm actually, it doesn't matter too much about this, but what, and just to, one second, a little bit of science here, you don't wanna overwork the gluten in the flour, otherwise the biscuit can be a bit, whoops, a bit tough. Well, it won't be tough, but it can be, tough. you know, you want it nice and tender um, when you eat it. So I might, rather than whisking it, and you can whisk it if you're using a mixer, don't worry, it's fine. But if you can, go to mixing it in with like a, a spatula or a spoon, because obviously when you're beating it, what you're doing is you're generating the gluten. Gluten's a natural ingredient found in the flour that makes bread stretchy. But we don't want a biscuit stretchy, we want them to be biscuits, all right? So if I stood here with a machine and beat it like mental for five minutes, when you ate them, it, it would be quite chewy, which is, you know, Mark, you might think it's all right for a biscuit, but um, we don't want that, all right? So just mix it in, mixed in, all right? How do you see that? All right, we'll be a little bit soft. But it's soft enough to put it on the, you know, we can put it on the baking sheet later. Now for the fun bit, for the chocolates. Get myself a baking sheet. Um, not a baking sheet, a chopping board even. So, let me get the paper underneath. And don't forget, if you have got, obviously, slidey, slidey, so I don't want that to slide. If you've got like a, dip, like a flat dishcloth or something, you can do this, but I've got a bit of tissue. By the way, don't forget that you need your oven on because we're going to be putting these in the oven probably within the next within the next five minutes easily. Oh, add the salt now. If you haven't added the salt, add the salt now. Did I not say the salt? Apologies. So it's uh, just one teaspoon of salt or a decent pinch, a big pinch of salt. Okay. Yeah, you have to melt the butter. Yes, question on YouTube. Right, so what's important here now is that we've got two sorts of chocolate. All right, so we have 110 grams of milk chocolate, 110 grams of the dark chocolate. You can, of course, if you don't like dark, 
People struggle with dark chocolate in cooking. In fact, I don't like dark chocolate. I don't like dark chocolate particularly. But when you cook with it, the flavours kind of slightly ramp down, so it's not as strong. So, for example, tomorrow I'm making brownies, you need to use dark chocolate. If you use like milk chocolate, it will taste nice, but not as as nice as using dark chocolate. You might have chocolate chips. You might have a chunk. All right, so it's 110 grams of each. When you chop the chocolate up, obviously be careful, and you might need a parent to help you with this because these can sort of fly everywhere. But don't get see like that. What we want is, I'll just show you quickly, and don't do this, this is not a, you know, this is meant to be a nice chunky chocolate chip cookie, a bit of a tongue twister. You want them fairly chunky. I mean, don't go mental, but you want them, if I show you in one sec, hang on, let's hold the board up. See those? All right, just chunks. And then they're gonna go straight into all the little bits of flakes, as well, the flakes of chocolate as well, and then, whoops, like that, and now I'm going to chop up the dark chocolate. The order's irrelevant, by the way, as long as it all goes in. So 110 of both. All right, 110 of dark, 110 of light, of the, of the milk chocolate, rather. When you're chopping it, by the way, you'll see that they act differently. All right, so dark chocolate has less cocoa butter in. Um, so it's a much stronger flavour, much more true to chocolate. Although you know, dairy milk is lovely, it really bears no real relevance to what actual chocolate tastes like. If you want to know what real chocolate tastes like, you would get yourself a nice dark chocolate bar, 70, 80, 90% cocoa. Would be quite, it's quite bitter, but that's the real taste of chocolate. All right, so dairy milk, like I say, has got at minimal real chocolate in there. It is really a mixture of uh, milk and sugar really with a little bit of chocolate, for, you know, a little bit of chocolate, cocoa in there for flavouring. But that's fine, whatever you're good with is good. And then we mix it, right, which is, I guess, not particularly rocket science. Again, tr we don't want to generate the gluten, you want a quick mix round, just so it's combined. Doesn't that look yummy, look at that. Yum. Yes, use both milk and dark, actually, that's completely the point. All right, so you, you need, whoops, hello. So you can use milk and dark, uh, so you need 110 grams of the milk chocolate, 110 grams of the dark chocolate, so in total 220 grams in total. You could, of course, have made this another time, vary the chocolate and have three lots of chocolate, but you would need to make sure it still totals 220, because too much chocolate will mean it will, you know, kind of possibly burn in the oven. All right, next stage, really simple. Hopefully logical. Now get your tins. Yes, use both chocolate. And I'm going to use a spoon, which I haven't. Okay, this is an, um, an American recipe. You haven't worked out yet. Um, and what they do in America is they actually get like an ice cream scoop a mini one and use scoops and blob it on. It's unlikely you've got an ice cream scoop, I suppose you might do, um, but you know, these make 12, right? So again, bit of maths. So we then know, if this should make 12, you therefore know that half of the mixture should make six. If you kind of half it again, so you're just in the bowl, so hold it in the right direction, then you're gonna know that's gonna make about three, if that makes sense, right? So all you're gonna do, is with that quarter, I've got, make a ball, you haven't got to flatten it down, right? So don't flatten it down. When it cooks, it will flatten down in the oven. All right, so let's get these on the baking tray. Mine are coming out the size of, what's that, golf ball kind of size. These will spread, right? So you're gonna have six on the baking tray if it's a standard, you know, size baking tray. Seven all right? Anyone got an issue? Fab. If you don't roll it in your hands, you don't actually have to, you could literally just put blobs on and then it will kind of sort its life out in the oven when it cooks, it will sort itself out. So that should be okay. All right, one thing which is important, which actually I haven't done, is make sure they are the same size. All right, so actually these are bigger than that one. So I'm gonna add a little bit more 
just so they you know will cook at the same speed because otherwise they won't put that out of the way for a sec next six or the final six we've got 12 any props we're all good let me just put mine on and in and then So if you find, like I have, I've got one smaller one and one slightly bigger one, then don't worry about it. Just take a little bit off and put it on the one that's a bit smaller. But you do want to try and make them as near as you can to the same size, all right? But don't worry about squishing them down. The other one will do that when they're cooked. Just gonna wash my hands. Alrighty, are we okay? Yours is liquid. All right, what's the what? The whole thing is liquid. Can we just run through what, what you put in? So it should be 100 grams, pardon me, little burps now, which is helpful. 115 grams of butter, which you've melted to a liquid. Pour it into a bowl. You then put in um, 100 grams of sugar, white sugar, 165 grams of brown sugar, mix that together then you add in um, the pinch of salt a teaspoon of salt then you want half a teaspoon of um, half a teaspoon of um, baking powder sorry not baking powder bicarb of soda so my brain went completely mushy there um, and um, you then want 155 grams of flour plain flour that will then make the basic mixture you then chop it two lots of chocolate Plonk it in and there's your mixture. Now if they're ultra wet for some reason, I probably would add a little bit more flour just to try and uh, combine it. Don't, don't go mental, all right? Literally you want maybe a tablespoon of flour and see if that combines it. If it really is wet, you may need to put it in the fridge just so the butter sets slightly and that'll make it easier to, um, you know, to, to, to scoop out. All right, so try and adjust it. Is that all right? Thank you. All right, so. I mean, I know it works. Um, sometimes it's just a very simple mishmeasure. If yours is soft, Tola, um, then don't worry. If, it, if it's like ultra soft, like it's falling off the spoon, um, you will need to add possibly a little bit of flour, or if you don't want to, you can put it in the fridge and it will firm up because the butter will kind of firm up and therefore the whole thing is firm, firmed up. Right, let's get them in the oven. Good point. Rosie at Wentworth. These will take 12 to 15 minutes, all right? So I'm gonna put mine in. I'm gonna leave it a minute. Um, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 12 first. I'm gonna take mine out at 12. I'll come back in 12 minutes, all right? And then, um, but it might take 15, that makes sense. Right, let's have a look. So that has been another 50 seconds. Yeah, I think we're probably good. So let me get mine out. Right, so mine have all slightly merged, but hey, who cares? No one cares, it's all good. So, if you can see, let me just move the camera down slightly. There we go. See how they're joining? No problem. Just with a palette knife or a knife of, or something, you just want to now separate them. I repeat, do not try to be clever and take them off the baking tray now because they will break. So what we're looking for is when you touch the outside, that's gonna be a little bit hard, a bit crispy, but the middle still will be soft. And that's what we're looking for because this is a chewy cookie as opposed to a crunchy cookie. So let's all go around. Ba, ba, ba. If you're like desperate and you can't cope waiting, one thing, yeah, no, we're not soggy, they're fine. So I can add to stress. If they're like, okay, so they need to be slightly brown around the edge. Um, the middle will still feel soft. Okay, that's standard. That's absolutely what should happen. And when they cool down, they will harden up so you can pick them up, all right? But what you're looking for, the indication is, is that they're, around the edge, they're a little bit hard, a little bit crispy, still soft in the middle, that is fine. As I said, if you really can't wait and you're feeling a bit brave, because all the heat 
is held in the in the roasting tin, in the baking tin. And if you've got paper like I have, just whiz it off the tin and they would cool down significantly quicker. Obviously, if you're the just on a baking tray, then do, do not try to take them off yet because it's very likely they will break. You will have to be patient. All right, any other issues? Are we all good? Give me a shout, anyone on YouTube? No, no, no one said anything on YouTube, that's fine. Oh, wait, is everyone okay? So these are gonna probably take, let me get cough, hang on. <coughs> Pardon me? So these are gonna take oh, not long, two, three, four, five minutes to cool down so you can pick them up and you can start snaffling away. Um, let me just try and lift one of mine. I would do a live taste, but I don't, you know, don't want to, it's a bit hot still. But actually, they look amazing.